What's going on, everybody? Josh Engelman for AwesomeO.com, and I am back with my NBA DFS contenders on DraftKings for Tuesday, November 23rd. Now, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you know when everything goes live. Follow me on Twitter, at Josh Engelman, only place you get updates to my sim results as we get closer to lock. Let me know in the comments section who is your favorite and least favorite of my contenders for today's slate. And finally, shout out to Prize Picks for being the presenting sponsor of this video. Use the promo code AWESOMO when signing up to get up to $100 on your first deposit. Now we're rounding out the bottom of my top 10 with Norm Powell, Jeremy Grant, Cade Cunningham, Alec Burks, and RJ Barrett on the outside looking in. Who will be my favorites? My top five plays for today? It's time to find out. First up at number five, we've got Sadiq Bey. He is small forward, power forward eligible. 6K, projected for 32 and a half. The goal is 40 and a half. He's going to be in the optimal lineup 28% of the time. He's just going to play big minutes for a team that's mildly shorthanded with no Killian Hayes, no Isaiah Stewart, and obviously no Kelly Olynyk. 0.96 fantasy points per minute in this spot. I think he's going to start shooting a little bit better as the season moves on. 34 minutes, 21% usage. 16 and 7 as a baseline. You get two and a half assists, maybe a stock and a half. Now, it is a difficult defensive matchup and it is a pace down spot. The Pistons do lose 2.2 possessions under their average up against Miami. It's not really changing anything to me. The eligibility, the price tag, the size of this slate, Sadiq Bay is difficult to get away from. At number four, I'm looking at Reggie Jackson, point guard eligible only, which is kind of a bummer. 6,100, projected for almost 33. The goal is 41. He's in the optimal lineup 28% of the time. He plays monstrous. We, we, we know exactly what we're getting out of Reggie Jackson. 35 minutes, a little over 0.9 fantasy points per minute. The second most usage on the team, 17 points, a couple rebounds, a couple assists. He doesn't do much else other than score, maybe a stock. Pace down spot against Dallas, although they will play a little bit faster without Luka on the floor, but that doesn't really matter all that much to me. You do lose probably a possession here. Nothing too crazy, about a half point. Still enough for Reggie Jackson to show up in the number four spot. In at number three, if he plays Nikola Jokic, he is just center eligible, which we know. That's going to be difficult. 11,400, but he's incredible. <laughs> 58 fantasy point projection. The goal is 63. Raw points will matter here. And he's in the optimal lineup 29% of the time. If he's playing, it's a wrist injury. I gave him 35 minutes, 1.67 fantasy points per minute. This guy has 34% usage with no Michael Porter on the floor. I got him projected for 28, 14, and 7, plus two stocks. Pace neutral against Portland, but it's Nurk and nobody else to slow him down. If Nikola Jokic is healthy today, you want to pay up and get him. There's going to be enough value to be able to do so. And he has a legitimate opportunity to break the slate. If Nikola Jokic scores 60 fantasy points or more today, you're going to need him. Next up at number two, we have just shooting guard eligible, which is crazy. Tim Hardaway. He's 5,800, projected for 34. The goal is 40. He's in the optimal lineup 32% of the time. I'm not anticipating Luka to play today. Evidently, he might have tweaked his knee again at the end of practice yesterday. So I'm going to business as usual. The past three games, he's been out. We're going to do it again. 35 minutes for Hardaway. 0.95-ish fantasy points per minute, 17 and a half real points, almost six boards, almost five assists, pace neutral spot against the Clippers. But really, it's just Tim Hardaway playing a lot of minutes. 35 is a pretty big number. I think he'll ultimately be a little bit more expensive than this if Luka continues to be out. I think we just eventually see him become like a $61, $6,200 player. So take advantage of the value while you can right now. Tim Hardaway looks great, but not good enough to get to the number one spot. Before we get to those number one contenders, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you know when everything goes live. Follow me on Twitter at Josh Engelman and let me know in the comments section who your favorite and least favorite contenders are for today's slate. And don't forget to sign up at Prize Picks using the promo code AWESOMO. Sticking with the theme of Luka being out, point guard shooting guard Jalen Brunson is my number one contender. He is 7,300, projected for 41. The goal is 46 and he is in the optimal lineup 34% of the time. Just monster increases across the board when Luka is out, including to his minutes. 35 minutes. Big time usage bump gets him to 1.15 fantasy points per minute. It's 26% usage, 19 points, 9 assists, 6 boards, and a stock. Matchup against the Clippers I'm not really worried about because I just want to play more Jalen Brunson. I don't even know if he's properly priced at 7,300 with no Luka on the court. Now, if Luka is in... 
it's going to be very difficult to pay 7300 for Jalen Brunson. But with my assumption right now, Jalen Brunson is my number one contender. Alrighty, folks, that will do it. Those are my NBA DFS contenders on DraftKings for Tuesday, November 23rd. FanDuel version of this video is around here somewhere. Make sure you check it out. Good luck tonight, everybody. We'll be back again tomorrow morning for another edition of The Contenders.